Hi, my name is Dom Atlas and I'm the creator and designer of VI Roads of Rome. Now in this video I would like to show you how to play the game. Let's start with the setup. Place the massive board in the middle of the table. Place the ROM tracker on round 1. Hand out a cohort board to each player. They choose a color and get all game pieces of that color. The game pieces are player pawns, league and officer pawns, influence cube, city forts and road milestones. Set the first turn order, either by rolling dice, rock paper scissors, age, or sword fight. Uh, probably not sword fight. Now place one of each player's markers on the turn tracker accordingly. The player closest to the highest number always goes first. You start the game with five legia, so put them boys onto the red spots in your cohort board. Now put the influence cube on slot one of the influence tracker. This is how much influence you have at the beginning of the game. Shuffle the Fortuna, Castra, and Deceptio decks and put them on their spots on the board. Draw the top three Castra cards and lay them out in front of the deck from left to right. Lovingly deal two Deceptio cards to each player. Totally not meant for backstabbing you later on during the game. The last player gets an additional one. Now shuffle the Mandatum deck and deal two to each player face down. For each player, place an additional Mandatum card face up next to the board and add two more. Face up Mandatum can be completed by any player, but only you can look at and complete your Mandatum in your cohort. Place the Dinar coins, stone cubes, hostility tokens, and basilicas at an easy to reach spot on the table. Now hand out starting resources to each player. Everybody gets 12 dinar and 8 stones. In turn order, each player places one fort and the other player marker on a city in the Empire. Place a road milestone on any road adjacent to your city. Keep in mind that Rome cannot be controlled by any player. Now that the setup is done, let's head in for the first round. A round in VI is split into five phases. In the first round, you skip the Fortuna, Ordo and Stipendium phases and go straight to the action. Depending on the number of players, you get a different amount of actions. Five actions for two players, four actions for three to four players, and only three actions for five players. Starting with the first player, each player takes their turn using all available actions before passing the turn to the next player. You can select any combination of the following eight actions. You may do the same action multiple times, but each time counting as an individual action. Now let's start off with building a road. Place a milestone on an unbuilt road adjacent to your player marker by spending as much workforce and stone as the road's value. After building a road, you may move your player marker to the city it's connected to. The move action. When you take this action, you can move to any city as long as there are built roads connecting it to you. If you use a road controlled by another player, you have to pay them a toll of one dinar to be able to use it. In VI, you can even go sailing. You can sail from any harbor, a city with two blue tridents, to any other harbor on the map. You'll have to pay three dinar to depart a harbor and three dinar to arrive at the other. If a harbor is controlled by a player, you pay them instead, but you don't pay for harbors you control. Now that you know how to move around, let's go fight some people by taking the conquer action. You conquer cities by moving onto it and assigning units with power equal to or higher than the city's value. To assign a unit as attacker, place its pawn on the conquer space in your cohort. Since your conquest was successful, place a fort on that city and you gain one influence. Now if you want to have a bigger army, you can take the recruit action. You're able to recruit any number of available legio for just one dinar apiece. Or if you want something more powerful, you can recruit an officer from the castra. Check if you have enough influence to recruit the unit you want. Now that you have enough influence, pay the card cost and the slot cost. Take the card and place it in one of your officer slots in the castra together with its pawn. Move the remaining castra cards to the left and draw a new one and place it on the last spot. You start the game with just one officer slot, but as soon as you gain six or more influence, you gain a second one. Sometimes you don't need all your actions, but you can prepare. When you prepare, you basically end your turn and gain 2 dinar for each action you didn't use. Once you've taken this action, you can't take any others though. Last, and probably the least favorite to be seen, playing Deceptio cards. Playing Deceptio cards doesn't cost an action, but it costs influence for each one you play after the first. After you've played a Deceptio card, put it in the discard pile. Once you've taken all your actions and ended your turn, you gotta pay your cohort. You pay 1 dinar for each Ligio you control, 2 for each officer in your first slot, and three for each officer in the second slot. Keep in mind, if you can't pay, they'll walk away. 
place the pawns in the work and conquest spaces back into their slots in the cohort. You come to the end of the round once each player has taken their turns. At this point, shuffle the discarded Deceptio cards back into the deck. Now we start another round. We start with the Fortuna phase. The Fortuna phase is also known as the Event phase. You move the round marker up by one. In the first and second round, nothing really exciting happens, so let's skip to round three. Round three is the first of the red rounds. Now the war officially begins. After round three, you reveal event cards, changing the rules of the game. Some state reveal next event, so just do what the card says. All events revealed in this phase are active until the end of the round. Now we move to the Orto phase. This is the phase where you set the turn order for this round. Remove all player markers from the turn tracker, and starting with the first player, each player chooses a new spot on the turn tracker. Early positions in the turn order cost dinar, while later positions are free. If you choose a position with a cost, pay dinar, as shown on the tracker, as soon as you place your marker on that spot. If you choose a free position, your marker will be placed on the last possible spot in the turn order. After deciding on the turn order, move to the stipendium phase, where you get your resources. In turn order, each player gains one dinar for each road they control, one stone or two dinar for each city they control, and finally draw additional Deceptio cards equal to their influence. After receiving resources, we're back to the action phase. A couple things change in the red round. First, let's look at the conquest action. If you now conquer a city, each city connected to it becomes hostile. A hostile city is shown by a hostility token, which means that they have mobilized themselves and fortified. If a previously hostile city will become hostile again, they become super angry and even tougher to beat. If you want to conquer a hostile city, you will have to roll a conquest die and add it to the city's value. Orange hostile cities add 1, red hostile cities add 2. Now wait, 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 wait. I know I said luck isn't a big factor and I don't like rolling dice. So here's the thing, the scout action. When you take this action, you can send out up to 3 Legio to scout an adjacent hostile city to find their weaknesses. So the next time you try to conquer that city, you add a die for each Legio you control scouting that city, and then you choose which die to add. One last thing is building a basilica. To build a basilica, spend 3 dinar and 3 stone to build any type next to a city you control, but there can't be more than one basilica in a region. Basilicas give each player controlling a city in that region a bonus to their resources, but only as long as there are no hostile cities in the region. So let's talk about how to end the game. The game ends as soon as one player completes two mandatum. This can be any number of secret or revealed mandatum. At the end of the last round, count your final score. Start with your influence, add one point for each city you control, and one point for each basilica next to city you control, and the bonus points from all mandatum you achieved. Whoever has the most points is the victor. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoy the game.